And today's guest is somebody that I've known for a long, long, long time. Someone I've got a, a immense uh, respect for. Uh, I've seen him speak at many events. I remember when he was doing some work uh, with Apps Events, for example, at, uh, at uh, BET uh, on the Google stand and seeing literally hundreds of people thronging around trying to hear his golden nuggets uh, of, of, of tip-top tips around all things Google. Uh, he's someone, as I say, I've known for a long, long time, uh, a teacher, a uh, basketball player, uh, um, not so good on the table tennis. Uh, he's an all-round uh, uh, tip-top guy, though, so it gives me great pleasure to welcome, welcome on to Tip Top Tips Edu today, uh, none other than Mr. Uh, J. Neil UK, John Neil. Hi, and welcome to Tip Top Tips, uh, John. How Hello. are you doing? Hello, Mark. Thank you so much for having me along for Tip Top Tips. Now, really, really pleased to have you on. We've been trying to sort of coordinate a time where we could get together for a recording for some time. Uh, I know you're really, really busy in your in your I say I say new role. Uh, um, you, you've been with uh, Moat, as you can see over your shoulder there, in your lovely office yeah. there up in that high rise building. Um, you've been with Moat for quite some time now. But uh, for those who don't know you, uh, you know, firstly, where have they been? But for those who <laughs> don't know you, uh, and and um, uh, and uh, your career in education and, and the role you have now, and and so forth and sure. so on. Can you show a little bit about yourself and your history and yeah, and, and all that kind of, thing, please? of course, of course, I can. So, thank you. For, I should say as well, thank you for the introduction. Everything was um, very, very generous, apart from the hugely inaccurate report on my table tennis skills. But, um, but apart <laughs> from that, 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 that was very kind of you, Mark. Thank you. So, yes, um, I am currently um, vice president of education at Moat, and I've been in this role since it's it's amazing to say, but almost a year now. Um, so joined in uh, the the early parts of uh, 2021, and here I am, uh, really enjoying it. The the view from my high rise in San Francisco is is awesome. Um, I'm actually based in Southampton, England, and before that, just as you say, Mark, I had a so I was in the classroom and school leader for 16 years. Uh, started off as a PE teacher. Along the way, I taught um, economics, design, computer science business studies, um, had a really fun time developing my sort of skills and my craft at a school in Hampshire before spending the last five and a half years of my career in school at a school called Halcyon in London. And yeah, I, I've, I've been very much involved um, with EdTech, kind of looking for purposeful use of technology in the classroom, as you know, very much the same as yourself, um, for kind of probably seven or eight years now. And it's a real pleasure to be with you, Mark, because you are always one of the go-to people. And you were probably one of the first people that I ever thought, wow, this person knows their onions when it comes to EdTech. So um, thank you for everything that you've done and also for having me on the show. You're very kind with your words as well, John. Thank you. Uh, I, I'm definitely a person who believes that a network is more powerful than the node and, and you know, education is a force for good and whatever we can do to share and, and help each other uh, um, it, it, it is all for the better, really, which is sort of thinking behind this show, really, bringing people together that, um, you know, who, who do share and, and do have great ideas and have got some some grounding in the classroom and all these different things as well. So, um, you know, you, you, you tick, the, tick the box as well, John. I think it is that alignment in our thinking, which has helped develop our friendship over the years, you know, because we have similar uh, uh, views about uh, and values when it comes to education. So, uh, <clears throat> without without continuing to bromance too much longer, um, <laughs> it is, it's, um, it, it's it's always great hearing from you, John. And I always really respect the things that you share and and, and your approaches and your ideas. But <clears throat> I, I'll jump straight into the question questions really because sure. you know uh, I, I, I'm not uh, trying to get everyone to leave education and and uh, start doing what we do and, and and all the rest of it. Absolutely not. But um, for some people, it's right. Uh, uh, I know that um, my mission of help, trying to help people has been massively helped by, be, by being able to do what I do now. I help far more people and have a bigger impact uh, um, than I would have done in a single classroom. Not to say that that isn't, uh, isn't a good thing in and of itself. It really, truly is. Uh, community impact is important. But I know there's a number of people thinking and, and exploring, uh, and I think it's quite right to look outward at, at your next sort of steps yeah. in your progress in your career and those sort of things, John. So with, with that in mind, you know, some people yeah. are thinking about leaving the job and, and you, like me, have left the, the job, the job being, you know, that of being a, somebody who's working full time in education, whether that's a sort of teacher of a middle leader with teaching responsibility, yeah. senior leader, so forth and so on. Have you got any tips for people that might be thinking about sort of yeah. leaving 
come and do some of the sort of work because the thing is sometimes you know with some of the locations you were you were at FETC last week for example I get to travel yeah. abroad every now and then it, it can look quite glamorous can it um it can look like it's, it's, it's the life of Riley but the reality is sometimes a bit different as well so have you got any tips and, and a few sort of reality checks of course of course Mark fair? yeah 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 and and I think something that you touched upon there is like really important like there is kind of you know, there is no better career than being in the classroom and being able to inspire and help all, all of these willing learners that are in front of you. And some of them perhaps more willing than others, but I think it's just that, that it's such a wonderful privilege. And I think that for me that, um, you know, I can remember before I became a teacher, I was working as an accountant and I remember seeing those signs and the, the adverts about those that can teach. I don't, I don't know if you remember those, Mark. And I just thought like, yes, this is something that I really want to do. And I think um, whilst it has been, whilst it has represented a move away from the classroom for me, um, I still try to make sure that everything that I do and everything that we're trying to do as Moat is with the learners at the heart, with the teachers trying to understand, trying to engage, trying to make sure that, you know, that whilst I'm no longer dedicated to a single school or to a single classroom, still recognizing the, the, the impact of um, educators all over the world that are. Um, and I think we were talking just before we came on air, Mark, about the kind of shift happens videos and when, uh, when we talk to young people about preparing them, preparing them for jobs that don't yet exist. And I think sometimes as teachers, it's it's really uh, hard to kind of because of all the pressures with planning and marking and the pastoral roles and everything else that goes into being a teacher is it's quite hard to actually take a step back and to realize that the skills that we develop as educators, as communicators, as as marketeers in our daily interactions with not only students, but with staff and with parents really is sparkling on any CV or resume. Um, so I would just really encourage um, anyone that's that's thinking about perhaps a career outside of teaching is to think that you can definitely do it. Uh, you only have to go onto social media to see all of the amazing roles that people are taking on. Everything from a role like myself or yours, Mark, to becoming content creators for uh, banks or to becoming instructional technologists, but in fields outside of a traditional school environment. There are plenty of things out there. Jump onto LinkedIn. I would say it's a good idea if you update your LinkedIn profile. See the kind of things that the skills that you know that you have developed and see what kind of matches they there are. And I'm pretty sure that you'll be not only really pleased, but quite surprised about the opportunities and the possibilities that will be there for you. Yeah, I, I definitely advocate for that. Uh, like you, I, I guess, you know, we, we didn't plan to be in the roles that we're in now. We didn't sit down 10 years ago and thinking, <laughs> right, how can we get out of teaching? <laughs> it's often been, often been a result of some of the things that we were doing. And I think uh, having heard your story and, and, and knowing you as I do, John, um, your, your story about how you came to join Moat is quite an interesting one. Um, because again, you weren't planning to 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 do what you're doing now. Could you share a little bit about your story about how you ended up being at Moat? Yeah, and, and of course. To your classroom practice and things. Yeah, so um, kind of March, April of uh, 2020 was quite an intense time for all of us in the classroom. Um, and, and I remember, so just as Mark said, like, I've, I've had the privilege working um, working for apps events, but on the behalf of uh, Google at various events around the world. And and I'm a real believer in the kind of power of uh, Google as a platform to be able to connect with, with educators and with your students. And when we went into lockdown the first time around, Mark, I was really struggling to give meaningful feedback to my students that actually weren't, because I like that face-to-face -face interaction. I like them being able to hear my voice, to hear the intonation, to understand that, um, you know, that we're all pulling together. And so I was looking for a good um, method or means by which I could use voice. And I happened to come across a tool called Moat. Uh, Moat launched in March of 2020. And I did a video, uh, did a presentation as part of this. There was something called the EdTech Demo Slam. And Will Jackson, who's the CEO of Moat, saw that. And being the sort of guy he is, sent me a message just to express his gratitude um and we had a chat and we got to talking i started off initially making one or two videos because i recognized that there was a bit of a gap in their in their youtube content so i started creating something called moat minutes and then as things started to build 
at Moat. I uh, had a few more chats with Will and with Alex, the uh, the CTO and the co-founder, about how perhaps a role might evolve. And that role did evolve. And here I am, as I say, um, one one year on almost. And, and that goes to the power, really, of, of being an outward facing kind of educator, looking for things to champion and support your kids the best you can in the classroom and, and look what happens as a result of it. So I, I think it's a really inspiring story, John, and one that others, you know, who are outward facing and joining in using social media. Because, again, you and I, we, we knew each other virtually far, far, far um, uh, earlier than we did in, in, in meeting up in real life and, and, and all the rest of it, wasn't it? We were involved in things like AppShare Live and oh, sharing course, on Twitter yeah, and, and all those different things. So um, I, yeah, should, I should add one thing there, Mark. Um, I should add one thing just b- before we jump ahead is that if, if, if you have a tool in mind, just as you say, if you have a tool or a passion or there's a particular thing that you do in your classroom that you think that that a teacher not only down your corridor but on the other side of the world might benefit from. If you put together some sort of content, be it a video or a blog post or a podcast or whichever format best suits your own voice, then you would be amazed at how closely ed tech companies, I'm sure um, tech companies in general, follow that space, follow the social space. So wherever you, you kind of have your network and you have your footprint, um, and even if you're just starting out, share stuff and see what happens. The worst case scenario is that you learn something in the creation and the sharing process. The best case scenario is it can turn, it can, it can expand, extend your network. You can learn something from other educators, from other people in, in the same space as you, but you will also find that lots more opportunities and options come your way as that network expands. Sorry to interrupt you, Mark. That was rude of me. No, no, it's, it's, it's all good, and I, and I would absolutely massively uh, um, um, sort of reinforce that that statement and that, and that sentiment, John. And, and sometimes it's not even about the tools; it's, it's, it's sometimes the ideas. If you create a decent worksheet, you know, a resource, those kind of things. I remember I made a, an acrostic um, uh, for um, uh, about, about, about online safety, and, and a school in New York um, took it off off the blog post that I shared, uh, used a, um, a tool. Uh, to, to make it sort of like eight foot tall by four, four foot wide. And it was in their hall and all these kids were around it. And the guy um, who did it took a photo of it and sent it back to me. I was like, oh my goodness, you know? <laughs> um, and it just, it's so lovely knowing that, you know, you're able to help people beyond the wall of your own classroom and, and, and all those sort of things as well. So, yeah, no, that, 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 um, that, that uh, advice really does resonate massively with me, John. Thank you for sharing that. Um, I wanted to ask you, um, you, you mentioned, as I did in your introduction, about the Google uh, uh, sort of stuff. Uh, um, and uh, I've been very fortunate to see you present and, and uh, see, see your um, sort of explainer videos and, and other things that you've created, other resources you've done. Uh, I, I, I count myself as being someone pretty handy when it comes to using Google uh, Workspace and education. But, um, you know, you, you, you are up there in terms of my sort of go tos. for people. If, if, if I want to know, how do you do that in, in how do you do that in Google? You know, uh, yourself, Alice Keeler, others, you know, you, I, I see myself as being pretty good, but you guys are right up here. So with that in mind, you being such a sort of a Google guru, John, uh, in your work with teachers, and the fact that you're, you are particularly good uh, uh, with using Google tools. Could you perhaps highlight, um, and again, there is so much you can do, um, yeah. but in a tip top tips, sort of quick takeaways, quick wins yeah. kind of a way, you've got sort of three, let's say, top tips for using Google yeah. Workspace you could share, please. Yeah, of course. And, and I think it's really important as well to just say that, um, you know, that in terms of the Google network, and I'm sure it's the same in other communities too, with regard to um, uh, Microsoft, Adobe, like that, there are always ways that you can find and you can share and you can learn. So I'd really encourage you to, to do that if you aren't already. In terms of Google, um, so if, if I were to kind of have, I used to do something called uh, Ninja Tips. Uh, it was actually back in the days when uh, when it was called uh, G Suite. So I had uh, G Suite's Ninja Tips and did a couple of sessions. And I think that in terms of everyday tools, uh, so for example, Gmail, for me, a massive win, and I feel like it's probably a couple of years ago now, but I know that it, that it's still underutilized, is the, the capacity to snooze your mail. So you have an email come in, uh, you can't deal with it there and then, but you know that there is some sort of deadline or it would be useful to attend to by a specific date. 
If you're in that email message and you tap on the snooze button, which is a little clock that appears just above the message, you can choose your time. So that would be um, kind of tip number um, 1A. And if I were to sort of stay in the Gmail space, I would also really encourage, um, particularly school leaders actually, to start to use schedule send. Uh, so schedule send that you can do from, from within an email rather than pigging your team and your colleagues like when you're working and I understand that we all have to work late sometimes you know like we, we, we all kind of burn the midnight oil but just have, having that respectful distance of whilst I'm working maybe it's not great to drop something on someone's plate at half past nine ten o'clock at night so I would definitely recommend just before you press send that you can schedule that email for the, for the following morning. Um, jumping onto my favorite tool within, within uh, um, Google would be Google Slides so I'm a huge fan of that. And I would just say that, that I've seen so many times that the um, understanding and the content that students and teachers and, and school administrators can put onto a slide deck is awesome. But then they spend a lot of time trying to fiddle around with graphics and stretch them and make it look all a bit with the best one in the world, not the design, the aesthetic doesn't quite uh, match the, the invaluable content being shared. There's a tool called Explore within Google Slides that basically gives you options of how you can make those slides and any content you have on that slide look super professional. And one other thing within Slides is to insert diagrams. So often people are wondering about how within Google Slides you can create a timeline or a Venn diagram or something like that. Um, you can do that within Google Slides just by going to Insert Diagram. And then just as a final tip here, um, something that, um, that I've tried to do with the team at Moat a couple of times, I've done with our ambassadors and our wider community. So Google has something called Puzzle Party. Th th this is what I mentioned to you beforehand, Mark, I was just going to share. So Puzzle Party is basically an um, online collaborative jigsaw puzzle that you can do with your peers or with your classmates. You can choose the level of difficulty. You can choose the image. And it's lots of fun. And you can all be on there and you can see people moving around the pieces. I would definitely recommend that. And if you're not already... Um, and you want to find out more about using Google tools, then jump in with um, Google Certified Educator. And as you grow into that, and if you want to become a trainer or an innovator or a coach, there are a huge number of excellent resources on their education site. Yeah, absolutely, John. And uh, say so we, we did the um, Google Certified uh, cohort together ourselves, I believe it was 2014? 2014, um, Mark. Yeah, it it's, still, it's, still yeah. Touted as, it's still touted as the best cohort ever. So there we go. Wow. It goes without saying, really, <laughs> doesn't it? And uh, our, our, our giant leap team, uh, we, 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 we still connect every now and then, don't we? Uh, yeah, as it, a was a, it was a great experience. Uh, true, truly was. And what I love about your advice there, John, I mean, I, I could pick up uh, a, a number of uh, things there which really resonate, particularly with the... Um, uh, with the use of slides, uh, it, it is for me like it depends on your on your platform of choice in your school. But um, yeah, just like we hear from Apple schools about how powerful Keynote is with the slides options and, and things within that, so here, similar stories with PowerPoint as well in those Microsoft yeah. schools uh, really resonates. But my favourite tip there, John, actually, and it's so important, and it's not a big thing, um, but it's so uh, that that professional distance, professional respect, uh, being mindful of mental health and well being, and notifications yeah. going off at crazy hours, just scheduling your emails it takes you a microsecond to, to do uh, but can have a big impact on on managing you know workload and, and uh, people's well-being it can always wait until the start of the next working day can it so great advice okay. there john thank you um jumping on, on to um uh, some more tip top tips uh, so we, we, I've, I've had a long time sort of talking about your google prowess but yeah. um uh, not a lot of people know this, but John's also an Apple Distinguished Educator. We, we uh, right. met and, uh, uh, at another event, uh, um, which was the uh, Apple um, Distinguished Educator Institute, uh, um, just outside yeah. Amsterdam, and uh, we've been at other events together and things with, with Apple as well. So uh, flipping it into an Apple kind of world, John, um, just yeah. like you did a second ago with Google, uh, have you got any yeah. tip-top tips for teachers uh, using yeah. iPad in the classroom? Yeah, of course. So I think, um, first of all, yeah, I, I, I'm a proud uh, Apple Distinguished Educator too. Um, I know that they, that they also have a wonderful community, like regular chats going on, on on socials, people really sharing super generously. So again, if you're not involved with that and you use and you use iPad, then then um, please, please try and engage with those. Um, I'm, I'm a big believer, Mark, in the, the 
um, in creativity and storytelling. And I think um, iPad is such a brilliant device for that. I think that the um, that the apps that you would get that come as part of the iPad. So, for example, Clips is a wonderful tool for developing quick, snappy storytelling and being able to present it in a nice, creative way. And I think that particularly as we, um, you know, other platforms that are taking off, for example, the likes of TikTok, I think really giving our young people the opportunity to practice those skills and to take maybe something that might be a traditional, this is a worksheet or this is, I'm not a massive fan of worksheets, most, but, you know, something that would be more of a traditional pen and paper, uh, pen and paper activity, which by the way, there's nothing wrong with those activities, but just giving your students the opportunity to demonstrate their understanding using some of those awesome tools is really important. One kind of tip that I found from my role at Halcyon is that I felt that it was my role to kind of be almost like an encyclopedia of like, these are tools that when my team come to me, when my students come to me, these are tools that I can share. I would really encourage you not to go sort of crazy on the app store and just to search for something because it can be totally overwhelming. It can be, also it can be equally as overwhelming having said how wonderful socials are, but seeing all the other amazing things that people like yourself are doing, Mark, and trying to catch up on all of those skills like that. I would say really importantly, particularly with the wealth of amazing creative tools that are out there, that when you're finding a tool is to stick with it and become as proficient and as fluent in that tool as you can. So when it comes to using it with your students is that you can actually help them or you can learn alongside them. Um, I don't, I don't actually believe it's true that when when people say, oh, students know a lot more than, than, than us, I think students are more confident. I think that young people are more confident, but we are still the experts. Like when you're teaching a subject and, and you know what the students want, want to learn, I'd really encourage that. Um, and then one final area, um, which I fell in love with using the iPad was actually augmented reality. And I know that you and I are both uh, real, real fans of that. So again, lots of apps out there. Um, everything from the likes of Apple's own re uh, realities, um, reality uh, composer uh, um, to co-spaces I used to really love using when I was in the classroom. And then lots more in between. So like Figma as well, for like having augmented, augmented reality portals like bringing that sort of extra something into your classroom space, like as a mixed reality option as well, is more than just bells and whistles, by the way. You know, I would always say, make sure there's a purpose to whatever tool you're introducing, ed tech or otherwise. But when you can do that and you can make it fun and exciting and engaging, which isn't a bad, which isn't a bad word, and it can um, excite those learners about what's going on in the classroom, it becomes memorable. When it becomes memorable, it becomes something that they can you know, become passionate about. And if you can do that in your subject, I remember actually the first time I used augmented reality, Mark, was was actually in table tennis because myself and a uh, student teacher, we had 60 kids in the, in the, it wasn't even in the sports, it was in the main hall. And we had all these table tennis tables and we couldn't get around. So we actually had these, what you would typically have in a PE lesson, so like A4 sheets of paper with the, you know, this is how you do it in a little picture. But when the students scanned the picture with one of our, we didn't have a, many iPads, but with our handful of iPads, the picture would come to life and it was one of their peers demonstrating a particular skill. So yeah, I think that in terms of creativity, it is hard to beat the, the iPad. Yeah, no, I, I definitely agree. And, and and what I love about the advice there, I mean, there's plenty of takeaways there from the app choices like Figments and uh, and uh, yeah. Reality Composer and so forth and so on. But again, it's it's that it's that uh, it's that sage advice, which is don't go in too heavy, don't try and do absolutely everything. That's one of the things which has always worried me about things like the periodic tables that I create because they're it's great to have it as a resource. But then I think you know, people see it like, oh, crikey, I need to learn eighty two new apps. You know, again, it can be completely overwhelming. So I think your your sort of tempered sage advice there around you know being absolutely whiz and, and fluent and, and confident in that one particular thing and, and know how that fits into your practice is is, is sage advice because it goes to that TPAC thing doesn't it you know yeah. you've got to teach you, you know you know how to teach it how can technology help and that's where you know that's that sweet spot thinking about that bringing it in and doing that in a measured way based on a tool that you know will work is, is where you're going to see most of the impact isn't it exactly Mark yeah 100% agree with that. 
Brilliant stuff, John. Thank you. Listen, we're um, we're getting close towards uh, the end of our time together, but I wanted to talk to you about feedback um, because yeah. um, uh, as someone who um, works at Motor Motor, is a fantastic tool for feedback. So I wanted to talk to you a little bit about feedback. Uh, as you know, um, you know, like Hattie says, feedback should be just in time, just for me, just what I need to use to move me on in my learning journey, all that sort of stuff. And and uh, we know we need to be closing that feedback loop nice and quickly, and and so forth and so on. Uh, have you got any top tips for teachers when it comes to thinking about feedback, perhaps with yeah. Motor or perhaps with not? Yeah, of course. So um, yeah. First of all, just to speak a little bit to Moat's value there. So um, we are a tool that really, really easily and seamlessly integrates voice throughout Google's ecosystem. Uh, so everything from feedback into classroom to adding a bit of creativity to your Google slide decks, and then also very, very popular integration with uh, Google Forms. But in terms of feedback, I, I, I think it is arguably the most important thing that, you know, um, that you can continue to craft as an educator, being able to impart that little bit, as you say, um, just on time and just when it's needed, that little bit of um, stimulus for the student to, first of all, appreciate that you're there with them, that you're working alongside them, and you understand exactly the work that they're submitting, but also the effort that's gone into it, and then how to scaffold instruction in a way that's going to be manageable for them in terms of taking next steps forward. So one of the things, and I mentioned that the reason that I came across Moat originally is because I was missing a, a connection with my students and being able to add my voice uh, into, it didn't have to be Google Classroom, into Google Docs or wh wherever else, being able to add my voice and for them to hear that, the feedback was instantly that they were engaging much more that they really valued that, like from their perspective, it, it felt like it had taken more time, whereas actually from mine, it had taken less. And I would say that, um, you know, there are lots of resources out there too, in terms of, you know, crafting our feedback and the art of feedback. We actually have a resource, which I can share with you, Mark, to put in the show notes about we've got a feedback academy. Um, but yeah, I, I, th I think it's not only important as well, like, when we're giving feedback to our, to the learners in the class, but also when we're, you know, as school leaders or when we're communicating with colleagues about things that we've seen, just being able to um, to show that um, particular empathy in the conversation and finding ways that together we can grow, I think is super important with that. Great stuff. Thank you very much indeed, John. Uh, I am um, uh, mindful of time, as I said, but I, I have got one quick uh, la last question I wanted to sort of run, run by, if that's OK. As you yeah. know, I'm, I'm a big fan of uh, marginal gains. Uh, um, we know there's no big sort of silver bullets in education that are going to make a huge difference, but things that we can actually add and uh, add to our, our, our sort of teaching and learning toolkit with technology uh, uh, can be really helpful. Um, uh, and uh, so, well, actually, can you share an approach that you know of that in, sort of encapsulate that marginal gains uh, thinking, uh, so that when you know you you add this tweak in, you aggregate all those things together, it yeah. uh, can make a big difference. Have you, have you got a tip you could share um, that would sort of fall yeah. into that kind of bracket? Um, yeah, I have, and it probably isn't the kind of typical, um, the typical kind of tip that uh, that you might get, but I'll share it anyway, Mark. So um, often people, you will see people are looking for where can I find the most or, or the best, um, the best innovations in education, or where can I find an example of a school leader who's doing something in a really innovative way. Um, and actually, what I what I would say, and something that really benefited me in terms of like steadily and steadily increasing my my own approach and outlook when it came to innovation and philosophy of education and what it means to actually think outside the box was to do exactly that and to start thinking about not what can I learn from other educators, not just what can I learn from other educators, from other school leaders and from other examples going on in wonderful institutions all around the world, but what can I learn from people in business that are doing innovative things? What can I learn from the ways that they are, um, the way that they are excited and engaging their, their their workforce. Like, what are the incentives? How how are they how are they working? What are they what are they talking about? And once you start doing that, and again, it's one of those things just to be careful of not not sort of drowning in all the content out there. Maybe find a podcast. So something that helped me uh, think a little bit differently was to start listening to to the Tim Ferriss show um, and to Gary V as well um, as people that 
aren't wouldn't call themselves they're not teachers but i think they would call themselves educators and i when when we have that kind of um healthy outlook about listening outside our communities and also outside our sort of traditional space i think it can only can only help no, absolutely. And, and uh, uh, like me, I know you're a big fan of Veggie Twitter and, and all of that. Yeah. But I, th- I think it's, it, sometimes, you know, when you're developing your, your PLN, you can often end up just finding lots of the people who have similar voices to you. And, and so whilst you might, you know, I mean, I don't, you, you're definitely you know, somebody who falls into that bracket with, with, with me, for example, John. Yeah. But I think it's equally important to have those people that, um, that do think differently. You know, yeah. there are a, a regularly uh, sort of seen debate on, on uh, edu Twitter it is the one between the sort of the pro- progressive uh, educators and the sort of more traditional educators, for yeah. example. But uh, without mentioning any names, you know, uh, you know, there, there are plenty of those that I have within my PLN as well, yeah. because I think it's really important to have, you know, uh, people that challenge you know your your approaches challenge your your, your beliefs uh, and what have you and, and either you'll learn something and it will change what your practice or it will reinforce the perspective that you've got that tells you what you are doing is actually right you know it can only yeah. help you to actually develop and be better and all those things so i think that's definitely some great advice there again john look we're, we're out of time unfortunately we could we could talk for ages uh, uh you and i as uh, as we, we often do but um i'm mindful we've got a crack on so I just want to say a massive thank you to you, John, for taking some time to join me on Tip Top Tips Edu today. Uh, as you've probably seen scrolling across the bottom here, uh, or if you're listening back on uh, Netsport Radio, then you, obviously you won't see this. So uh, just to share, you can follow John on Twitter at jneal, N-E-A-L-E UK. And if you're interested in learning more about Moat, uh, then please do visit moat.com. Uh, where you can get involved and, and uh, sign up for a free trial and, and see how it can help you uh, in the work that you do in your school as well. Uh, so, listen, thanks again, John. Really appreciate it. Thank you to our listeners for uh, joining us uh, for another episode as well. And we look forward to seeing you very soon on another episode of Tip Top Tips Edu. But for now, it's goodbye from me and it's goodbye from John. Thanks, everyone. Cheers, Mark. Cheers. Thanks. Bye.